Jonathan Haynes spent his lifetime working in Jaguar cars, but for the last two years, he's been farming. Now the last British-owned maker of small cars has gone bust, and Haynes is realizing a lifetime dream. He's buying the company. I'm feeling very nervous about taking this on, and I'm also quite frightened about what I've taken on. Where do I start? I haven't got a lot of people to, to suddenly run to and say, how do I do this? It's, it's really down to me. But he's going to have to adjust his sights from four wheels to three. The Reliant Robin, a British institution. Laughed at by many, but loved by enough to see it survive into the 1990s. Reliant's just the only British small car left, because all the rest are owned by Germans. And it's just a good symbol of how Britain's surviving. We aim to get back into production as and when I can, when it's sensible to bring people back into the company. I'm not going to stand in front of all of you now and say, yippee, the company's going to fly and we're going to have 20 cars being made next week or 30 cars the following week and so on. It's going to be a, a slow process to get Reliant back on its feet. Reliant Motors has gone bust three times in the last five years. Now, where so many others have failed, Jonathan Haynes believes that he is the man to save the Robin. A few months ago, 110 people worked on this site. Now it lies deserted and in complete disarray. As he arrives for his first day in charge, Haynes challenges to get the plant running again and to start building new cars. Well, I've never done it before, and um, wasn't quite sure what to expect. The BBC were pointing a camera at me as I trundled towards the gate. Very emotional time. I didn't know whether to wave at the camera or <laughs> just sort of look blank. I decided to look blank. Met George, our security man, and he opened the gate and handed me the keys virtually. In fact, I wasn't going to come um, with Jonathan, and then he said to me, you know, come along, you know, so I came armed with a bucket and a mop and we cleaned the offices. <laughs> and my son, William, cleaned the floor of the machine shop. <laughs> so there you are, complete family business. The way ahead is now to build my team around me. It's an impossible task to do it on my own. I've got to have the right team. While his wife, Samantha, takes over the company accounts, Haynes decides to hire back engineers from the original Reliant team. They know how the cars are made. First of all, we'd like to welcome Barry to the organization. Okay. After a break of just a few months mm -hmm. uh, from the administration, but um, Barry's going to look after the works production and be works manager. Good. And um, we welcome you <laughs> at the moment. And um, I think you know, I know, and we need to, during the meeting, try and find a way of bringing the labour in and try and work with you on the, on the programme, how are we going to do that? I'm optimistic, otherwise I wouldn't be here. But if the administrators left the company in quite a state, it's a case of uh, picking up what pieces we've got left to uh, restart the company and uh, get on a sure footing. I think if I'm truly honest, 70-30 success at the moment. I think if our backers have got the patience to stick with it, it'll go. Reliant is one of the last car companies to do it all themselves. The bodies are made in fiberglass moulds. They even build their very own aluminium 850cc engine. But it will be months before they can start full manufacture again, and Haynes has staff to pay in the meantime. Luckily, he's found something on the site that will bring in quick money. We've found 14 cars which are almost finished. Yes, they need wheels and they need steering wheels and, and, and a few other pieces, but by spending a few hundred pounds quite quickly, you can generate some cash very, very quickly with our dealers. 
Oh, good morning, it's Bright Motors. Uh, I'm just uh, chasing up the headlighter just as... To finish the 14 cars, Alan Bone and Jason Hodgkinson have been brought back to buy the parts they need. But some of their hundreds of suppliers are making life very difficult. Mr. Haynes this afternoon, and then uh, obviously I'll give you a call. Since I've been at Reliant on and off the last five years, the company's gone bust three times. Uh, you know, some suppliers have lost 20, 30,000 pounds. And obviously they're trying to recover that money back. I mean, the company I've just had a phone call from, we've hoarded 200 bulbs at 10 pence each, uh, which is about 20 or 30 pounds. And they won't supply it until that 20 or 30 pound check is cashed into their bank account, you know, for 30 pounds. I mean, it's ridiculous, but they just will not take the risk. It used to be quite different. In the early 1970s, Reliant was a success story, the second largest British car producer in the country, making 360 cars a week. They didn't just make three-wheelers. One Reliant was famous for being driven by royalty. I want to carry the three-wheeler back to the good old days of several hundred being produced each month here. Then, of course, then the future looks, um, once we've got some money, money rolling in, then I, then I think we can start looking at sports cars again. Reliant used to produce a, lo a lot of similar GTEs from this site, and it was a very successful car in the 70s and 80s. But the three-wheelers, the ultimate goal for us, because that's where the loyalty base is with our customers. Hello, Reliant Parts. With no cars being made, the cash from selling spare parts will be vital. Yes, where do you live? And I'll tell you where your dealer is. But after months of shutdown, competitors have moved in to take much of the business. Bruce Morris has been hired to get it back. Is it? We've got what year? I mean, parts has always been fairly cash rich. We're getting quick and prompt payment from the dealers, which helps the cash flow throughout the company, yeah. Now the trouble is we have to stock a lot of bits. Well, that's the plan. I hope to stock a lot of bits. Now, as for this, this guy, Graham Walker, he's probably at the moment taking half our sales, as a guess. So that means he's taking two and a half thousand pounds a day, two thousand pounds a day. And we've got to undercut him all the way through, but more than that, we have got to offer a better service, Bruce. Yes. And you and I have had words Saturday morning that we've got to get our act together over there and be very, very positive. John Neal, who started Unipart, who now is one of the captains of industry in Britain, the answer is yes, now what's the question? And it was the best slogan he kept going for five years. Mm. It was brilliant. The answer is yes, now what's the question? If you're selling pounds. We've got a lady in our parts department who's saying the answer is no, but perhaps we can do it. Or perhaps we can, but the answer is really no. You've got to change her, change her. You've got to change her around, have to change her culture, change her thinking. Because she's not gonna, she's not gonna last in that, you know, that department. The original 14 cars are nearing completion. More of the former workers are returning to begin building new cars from scratch. I've been here since 1963. The wife has been here some 25, 26 years as well. Everybody that has come back here now, I'm getting people coming back here and they are actually leaving work, leaving secure jobs to come back to work at Reliant Motors. He seems to know what he's doing. It's the gentleman who's uh, running the company. Very strict. So we'll take it from there, <laughs> see what happens. He's a farmer, ain't he, as far as I know. I mean, he's never had this sort of business before. So he's got a lot to learn, but he's on the right road. He seems to be doing a grand job. The Haynes now have cars as well as cows to worry about. Haynes inherited the family farm from his father in 1994. Gosh, don't go into the small place, I just think the spider's not in there again. No. I'm working long hours, and I'm sure the long hours are going to carry on for the next few months, if not the first year. But I'm seeing a lot of, a lot of my family, and um, weekends, particularly Sundays, are, are very precious to me. Maggie's back at 12 o'clock. Of course, mm -hmm. combined with buying Roland, I've also had a, the BSC problem to sort out. Like 
hasn't exactly been easy over the last few days, but um, we're getting there. Haynes began his career at Jaguar Cars in the shadow of his father, one of the founders of the modern company. In 1948, he introduced the XK120 and the XK engine. And then through the 1950s, did the C-type, the D-type. Really, I, th I think really where I grew up in, in the 60s, uh, at school and so on, was really the E-type. And um, my father was responsible for the E-type. I grew up with sports cars, and I've never really let go of sports cars. I, I guess it's a bit of emotion showing, but I enjoy the sports cars, and Britain does sports cars very well. Like his father, Jonathan may dream of a new British sports car, but for now, he'll have to be content with new three-wheelers. He's inherited several prototypes from the previous management. So here's some ideas. Introduce the three-wheel pickup as our sort of first priority to get a new model out. And then, if you don't agree, for goodness sake, shout. And then the bug three-wheeler. And I promise you, every person who walks past that yellow bug says, I want one. I wouldn't disagree with that. I think the three wheels are mm. bloody horrible, but perhaps it's my age. Mm. It might, you know, it's sold once in large numbers. And yeah, but that was 25 years ago. Whether, whether you know, restart, things, times have moved on in 25 years. I know, I know. But we ain't got much else to sell off the shelf. We have all the tools for it. Mm. Well, no, we have, well, we haven't. We haven't got the tools for the plug, because you ain't got a chassis jig, we ain't got any moulds. It don't meet current legislation, and it's about, what was it, 12 and a half grand to the estimate that ACS put forward to get it, to bring it up to date on legislation. Uh, it needs quite a lot of development work on it. Uh, I mean, quite honestly, what concerns me about this lot is who the hell's going to do it, because I see a lot of development work and development mm. cost involved in, in doing all of these. Mm. I'm trying yeah. desperately not to be cynical, but some of us have sat around this table and had more or less the same conversation twice in the last three years, yeah. and we've seen a lot of money wasted. Uh, I don't want to see that happen again. Mm. The first of the original 14 cars are finally ready. It's time to meet the dealers really the first handing over of the new Reliance company's cars and it's quite an exciting day really. We've got some five dealers here who've come to collect their vehicles and it's I think quite a relief for everyone. It's been two months of hard slog and today is the day that we hand over the keys and show everyone what we can produce. And these are the cars, are they? Yep, I'm not sure which one's over. Beige that's, that's, that's yours. That's yours, then. Looks better, doesn't it? Yes. yes. Yeah. The metallic's lovely. Yeah. Happy day for us. Right. Yeah. 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 You've worked yeah. hard on this, Mick. Yeah. I've seen it before, to be honest with you. Not so long ago. We went through all this motion recently, a year ago. Um, we're hoping these people have got it right this time. Listen, you know, listen to what's wanted. At the moment, if you gave me ten orders, I'd love them, but I'd still have to put you in the queue to, yeah. you know, yeah. at the moment to, to actually get... I think from what, you've been, from what you've been saying, Jonathan, I, I, I've got orders that I could have put in, that I haven't yeah. bothered, yeah. bothered, but if they're building up, you know, I must get some orders in. I think Mick will confirm that there's 140 orders now in the system, which yeah. is, that's going to take us, I think, through to the end of August, probably really to the end of the autumn. Um, it's just a matter now of bringing, bringing the staff back in, bringing the labour back in, and getting getting moving in the production sequence and right. the whole key to it was not to bring people back until I had the yeah. parts. No. Yeah. Once I got I the parts, the then I can take yeah. Spurred on by the demand for new cars, the factory is starting to come back to life and the bodies are beginning to go well. But it's a different story with the plant that makes the hand-built Reliant engine. Barry Hughes has the task of trying to get the ageing machines running again. One of the problems that we face is the machines have been standing idle for several months now and a spanner hasn't been put on them, no maintenance work or no preparation was put on to shut the machines down. So what we're faced with is a lot of the beds have seized up, they've rusted, they've dried out 
Being polite, I would say it's probably uh, a good collection which a museum would probably want eventually. A machine which is vital to produce crankshafts is broken. Until we can resolve this one, we can't progress any further. Um, until we've got this sorted out, so the, the, the crankshaft at the moment stops at this machine. Haynes has set himself a tough target. On August the 5th, he plans to begin full production, but they'll have to build and sell 50 cars in the month to pay the workforce and balance the books. It's going to be touch and go. I'm, I'm trying to give as much confidence out as I, I possibly can to everybody, but um, paying, paying cash for all our materials is not easy. I'm slightly nervous that our cash flow problem may hit us quite badly around about August, September time. Whether we're being punchy enough at the moment, I'm not too sure, but I'm taking things fairly mildly to start with. Um, really on purpose, I didn't want to lose my, my rag with anybody, and I sort of counted ten quite a few times, just trying to stabilise everybody and make sure that we, we all know and have a cohesive plan. Right, what I'm going to say now ain't going to come that easy. But the, the fact is that we are dead unless we produce 50 cars with our own new engines in August. We're going to have a, a serious cash problem unless we actually get these cars out. We're very close to getting engines, apart from one or two murderous shortages. We've got liners in now with a couple left of that, and they're being mm. finished off in the machine shop. They look too happy about that because they're four weeks late. I'm not looking happy about it at all. Not you, at all. Not you personally, but the, our buyers yeah. actually were four weeks late on yeah. getting liners in. Yeah. There are 400 liners, that's 100 engine sets. Do you want to use some of those on recon engines? Not, not at the moment. I am wetting myself with anxiety about this crankshaft. Is it going to work? With, with or without that machine, we'll, we'll get to work. Mm -hmm. Right, because I reckon we have about 48 hours left to make our minds whether we're going to produce crankshafts here or whether we go to they store in Birmingham now. We cannot afford to wait and make a copy of it. Well, they're going through, aren't they? They're working through, yeah. They're going through. And the machine which we've got where the it doesn't transfer us? We're not using that. We bypass it. We bypass it. So we are safe, Morris, aren't we? I believe so, sir. Barry? The lads in the shop have assured me that. Because this is a mountain we've got to climb. Mm. And unless we climb it, I'm not so sure we're going to succeed. And I can't say it with a more friendly, mm. smiling, unnervous face than I've got now. Mm. But we have got, got, got to produce these cars. No shortcuts, Barry, mm -hmm. other than overtime, overtime, overtime. Keep the lads back till six o'clock, seven o'clock, two full weekends. Ah. I can't emphasize enough the load which is on your shoulders for this yeah. company. You are now the most single crucial person in this company to provide me with 2,000 pounds a day. You've got yeah. to do it, Bruce. I don't care what you sell. Okay. And if you see something in that car park which will sell, sell it. If you see somebody who wants to buy a disabled car down there, yeah. sell it. If you see someone who wants to buy something out of that yard of scrap, sell it. Sell, sell, sell. Right. You're the most crucial person we've got. We've got to have £2,000 a day coming in off the spare parts. Uh, don't forget, five mile an hour speed limit does apply everywhere on this field. Reliant owners are passionate about the cars, but Haynes knows that they must be kept happy if they're to come to him for their spare parts. Reliant owners are incredibly loyal, and you just don't understand why they're so loyal when they've been three crashes, but they are. And, you know, there are 44,000 Robins registered out there. Everyone wants spare parts. Everyone wants to update their model, and it's such a good feeling. This will be my eighth one now. I've got a Regal 325 Series 1, which is a rare model, 1965. I bought my first one in 1972. And from that date until today, I have owned seven. And I've got a fun mini car, Mark F, and bought it off a farm. Um, and it's been used as a chicken shed. 
Oh, very, there. very nice. Yeah. And you're saying me, though. Now, I'm quite old as I love Children. Jasper Carrot telling us stories about it. And I love um, the Del Boy image of it. It was obviously the more serious side, but it's, it's a proper business, and we've got to make a go of it. They were actually higher. <laughs> if you haven't got a sense of humour, don't, don't own a Reliant, because you'll be worried to death about it all, and what people say, what the neighbours say, but sod the neighbours, you know. In fact, it pleases me to think that they've taken notice of it. You know what I mean? How are we doing on cylinder heads, Alan? We've had two fail again. So this one's failed twice, twice. now. That now is a total yeah. reject. Yeah, yeah. Liners we've got under control. We've got the castings. They're being machined. Crankshafts, we've got some crankshaft forgings now, and they're starting to process. There is one final little fly in the ointment, and that's the valve seat insert. That's the steel insert that, that goes into here. That's the one we're struggling for. And I've been trying to get those now for a period of about eight weeks. 5th of August has been mentioned. That's when we hope to start building our own vehicles. Obviously, the pressure's on myself and Jason at the moment to get all these items in. The raw materials that are machined into engines have to be ordered weeks or even months in advance. If just one item is missing, the production line will stop. So the orders for every one of the thousands of bits are checked daily at the shortages meeting. I don't think you got the point. When am I going to receive finished parts from Zephyr? I've been pushing Zephyr and I've been told that we will have some this week. I've been pushing them now for a fortnight. Will you please send them a fax? Yes, And we'll say we need a minimum quantity of 20 finished camshafts here on site this week. Otherwise, Bill Brett will have no work. At page nine, come down to the time and colour base. So you've got a hundred in working process, and you've got a hundred. I think we did seven, seven. No, it's too loose. This is getting loose. Um, come on, tighten up. Tighten up, everybody. How many have we got work in process of timing cars? 6044. You've got the 106 in working progress. Right, we did seven. Machine. We've got 106 machines, right? No, yeah, that was that hundred. Come on, someone, get it right. No. The hundred only came in the other day. In the spare parts department, Bruce Morris is having to keep up with his ever escalating targets. We beat today's budget, so that means it'll double again for tomorrow. Oh, did I say that? It was a thousand pounds when I started. Went out to three per day. Give me some stock, I'll knock it up to four. One of the best days? The best day. The best day? The best day. How much have you done? 3,255. Well done. Bruce? Yeah. Good day. <laughs> He's exhausted. What do you think, Dan? 4,000 a day target now? <laughs> <laughs> let's, let's crack the 3,000 a bit more first. <laughs> Johnny good. Do you, see, do you notice that? We'll crack this first, not a no. No, positive, positive. positive. Yes. I wonder if it's because they want to go on holiday, they want to get their cars repaired. Yes. So I think it helps. Oh, it's up a thousand pounds. Yes. This might be the week. Average three thousand a day. Yes. Might be the week. Yes. Gosh, they're all relaxed, aren't they? As the deadline for the start of full production arrives, it's clear that cash is dangerously low. This morning, we currently have about £40,000 in the bank, and since this afternoon, just before I got in the car, I just signed £16,000 worth of cheques. And we also have another commitment of £16,000, which must go out on Wednesday. So we're really without too much in the bank. to our engine yep. as it's going to be. It's the first one with the blocks and heads that we've acquired and had machined and finished off. It's got our crank in it, we've started from scratch. 
Yeah, stick that on, Bill. Let's tape that up and, and get it going. On the production line, things aren't going as well as hoped. A shortage of a few bits means they're having problems finishing the cars. If we haven't got the bits there, it causes a lot of aggro, both from the shop floor up to the management, because um, they're always asking why haven't we got it. Our biggest problem is getting the cars out to the customers. So cars sit in the car park unsold, waiting for one or two missing bits. But with the highest wages bill yet, cash is running out. I have to tell you that my wife was in here in tears on Wednesday night, because um, after everyone had gone home, and she thought she'd written too many checks out, and we hadn't got the money in the bank to cover the checks. I didn't sleep Wednesday night. I was, I had, I had reached fever pitch by this stage, and I thought, dear God, if there is a God up there, just let the spare pot of money flow in tomorrow. And on a Thursday, I normally come in late because I go and fetch the wages, and at 9 o'clock I phoned the office and I said, Alec, have any check have any checks come in? And he said, £4,000. And I had six grand in the bank, <laughs> and I knew that I was going to make the wages, and I was so happy. And I um, got the wages, and at close of business on Thursday, we had £400 in the bank. That is the closest I have ever, ever been. And I never, ever want to be like that again. So it was a little bit nerve-wracking. Nerve now, for the first time, Haynes can see the factory working flat out. He's employing just 60 people, half the number of the previous Reliant team. That'll mean fewer workers throughout the plant, and he wants them to make twice as many cars. In the mould shop, Brian Benton and his team are making the bodies in the traditional way, largely by hand. I've got 20 people working for me. All left jobs to come back to work for Reliant Motors. That shows you the sort of commitment what people are prepared to do. If things don't go right, I think it's got to help me get out of the country for a short period. <laughs> I'm horrified that we have to have 20 people in a moulding shop to produce 50 dollars a week. Horrified. But it used to be more than that. I'm just so saying. horrified. It's even worse then. I don't think we can handle it. But if we have the panels run out, those people, or companies that will do the job, have still got to pay people, still got to buy the materials from the same people as we buy, and make a profit. But it's still cheaper to do it outside. It's difficult to explain, because we have to produce, at the moment the company produces, last year produced three cars per man. I want 15 cars per man. Haynes has an idea. Instead of building up the glass fibre by hand, they could use a spray chopper gun. Instead of a chopper gun, they'll have two people mm -hmm. in the body. Could I say that two people cannot do a body, and like you talk a body, with a chopper gun? I've seen it being done, Brian. We're not handling labour. So we've got a real stalemate. I mean, if I can't have labour to make the doors, you've got to, you've got to prove very quickly to me why you need the labour. We're on, you know, we're on television now, so it's quite an important thing, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, I, 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 I agree with that. I'm not having 20 people in that mall shop. You can see I'm not. You can tell me why my smile or body language, whatever you wanted to call it. I'm not having 20 people in that mall shop. So we've got to find a way around it. I can understand what you're saying, but it becomes complicated, to be quite honest. 